welcome to Two Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is part two of my 2022 year-end book awards videos. I will link to Nicole's video from A Day of Small Things where I originally saw got this idea from. Part one, which I will link to in the description box and up in the cards, I gave my awards for favorite children's story, favorite short story, favorite world literature, most cinematic, favorite supporting character, best teacher, and favorite audiobook. For part two, I will be giving the awards for favorite screen adaptation, most comforting, favorite play, favorite nonfiction, favorite protagonist, favorite novel, favorite author, and book of the year. So let's just dive right into it. The award for favorite screen adaptation. Unfortunately, I did not read any books this year that that had a screen adaptation. Um, so I that was I, that one didn't work out. So instead, I decided to choose a screen adaptation from a book that I have read that came out in 2022. So I chose Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie. This adaptation was by Hugh Laurie and he did such a good job. I really, really enjoyed this adaptation of Why Didn't They Ask Evans. This is a standalone Agatha Christie that is really fun. Um, two young people basically pair up to solve a mystery and they, they really make a game out, out of it only to discover that murder is serious and um, and that they've gotten themselves into, <laughs> into quite a pickle. Um, but he did a really good job with the adaptation. He stayed faithful to the story. He stayed faithful to the tone of the book and the characters um, with, while still putting his own stamp on it. He did change a few things, but there was nothing that annoyed me. So often when I see a screen adaptation of a book that I love, I'm just annoyed by the changes that were made because they don't feel true to the book. Um, but any changes that he did make um, were okay with me uh, because they still fit with the story. Um, and often they were just changes that were cinematically more interesting. And so it was an adaptation that I really did enjoy and I am definitely going to rewatch. Most comforting. And this is the award for books that are comforting because they are so familiar to you. And so for this one, um, I have three Agatha Christie's <laughs> that I reread in 2022 that are in the runner up category. And that is The Man in the Brown Suit, Why Didn't They Ask Evans, and Appointment with Death. Um, the Man in the Brown Suit and Why Didn't They Ask Evans are both standalone novels and Appointment with Death is a Hercule Poirot. These are all books that I have read multiple times and I reread them again in 2022 and they definitely win. They definitely need to win as runner up, runners up for most comforting because I love sinking back into this world that I, that I, I know, I know where the story is going. And even though it's a mystery, I, I'm not disappointed that I know how it ends. Um, I just love being back in that world again. All right, the winner is Sanditon by Jane Austen and Another Lady. Sanditon is a manuscript that Jane Austen did not finish. She, she wrote maybe 50 pages, 11 chapters, something like that. And she did not finish this work. Um, but it was finished by Another Lady in the 70s. And I love this story so much. I love where the other lady went with the story. Um, I thought she did a really good job of, of keeping Jane Austen's tone and writing style. I mean, she's obviously not Jane Austen. Nobody is Jane Austen. But this is a story that I just really love. And so I, when I reread it this year, um, there is no question that it is the winner for me of the most comforting category. Favorite play. Now, <laughs> I only read two plays this year, so the winner has to be Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. Um, this was actually a reread for me, but it had been probably 20 years or more since I've read this play. 
the reason why I reread it was because I was reading a series of books where the main character, it's a mystery series, but the main characters are Eliza Doolittle and Henry Higgins. And I, I want, I was loving that series so much and I was curious to know um, how close were the authors of that series were staying to the characters from the original play Pygmalion. And so I read the original play again and I just loved it. Uh, it's lighthearted and fun and the character of Eliza Doolittle is fantastic and Henry Higgins too. Um, I would love to see this on stage. I have not yet had the opportunity to see this on stage. I've seen the movie, My Fair Lady, but I would love to see the play one day on stage. But for now, I'll just have to comfort myself with reading it. Um, so the winner is definitely Pygmalion. Favorite nonfiction. The runner up for this is The Genius of Jane Austen, Her Love of Theater and Why She Works in Hollywood by Paula Byrne. I, I already talked about this book in part one um, because she was, uh, that book was also the winner of Best Teacher. Um, I loved that book. Um, I found it very readable and yet not pandering. Um, you know, it was very readable and like it wasn't a slog to read. Um, and yet it was, it was still quite academic. I just really enjoyed it. I learned so much about Jane Austen and the, the plays that she would have seen and w how that influenced her own writing. Um, yeah, it was really good. But the winner for favorite nonfiction is Murder by the Book, The Crime That Shocked Dickens London by Claire Harmon. And the reason that this is the winner for me is because this nonfiction managed to combine true crime and literary criticism. And those are two of my favorite categories of nonfiction. Uh, and I just loved this book. I loved Claire Harmon's style of writing was very approachable. And I, I just loved how she told the story of this true crime, um, a, a valet or a valet killed his boss. Um, he slit his throat while he was sleeping and claimed that he was got, he got the idea for it from the book Jack Shepard by William Harrison Ainsworth that had just come out. And so she talked about that crime and took us through the process of the, the investigation and the trial and everything. And then she also talked about William Harrison Ainsworth and the book Jack Shepard and then just the broader um, literary landscape of the time and these books that were coming out that were called Newgate novels where the main characters were criminals and kind of the it caused such a kerfuffle at the time period and they were extremely popular Jack Shepard itself that book there were nine different plays on stage all at the same time about Jack Shepard and everybody was reading this book and, and then you but then you also had these other people who were saying you know this is trash we totally shouldn't be reading this it glorifies crime Charles Dickens had just written Oliver Twist which um, it could be set an argument could be made that it was a Newgate novel as well. And so there was just such a kerfuffle around this book and I just loved that combination of true crime and literary criticism. I just found it very, very interesting. Okay, favorite protagonist. The runner up for this, I have two runners up for favorite protagonist. One is Philip from The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. Philip, I loved that his that character. Um, Pillars of the Earth had a lot of characters, um, but I think you could safely say that Philip is definitely one of the protagonists. I just loved his character. He was such a good man, uh, struggling to do the right thing for the monastery and the cathedral, and I just yeah, I just loved his character. My other runner up is Arthur Bryant from London Bridge is Falling Down by Christopher Fowler. 
This is from the Peculiar Crimes Unit series. And I just love Arthur Bryant. He's a character, he's a detective in the Peculiar Crimes Unit in London. And he's, I don't know, I think he's 86. <laughs> and I just love him. He is the kind of guy, like, I would love to put him in my pocket. Um, I would love it if he was my grandpa. I would wrap his cigar around his his neck and I would kiss him on the top of his head. I just, I just love him so much. I love that he is forgettable. I love the crazy things that he has in his pockets. Um, the experiments that he does. I just, I just love Arthur Bryant. Okay, but the winner for favorite protagonist has to be Edmund Dantes from The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I have never read a protagonist who goes from being the hero to the anti-hero to the villain and then back to the hero. He has such a journey in this book. It is unbelievable. There is a huge section in the middle in the middle where your protagonist, your hero has become the villain and I did not know what to do with that because I thought to myself, this is the guy I'm behind that I have the sympathy for and yet I cannot agree with the things that he is doing. And so, like, I just, how do you write a character like that? It's amazing, it's amazing to me. So there was no question that the winner of this category had to be Edmond Dantes from The Count of Monte Cristo. Such an amazing character, an amazing protagonist who has such, a, such an amazing character arc amazing okay favorite novel this was really hard <laughs> this was very hard so I have one runner-up and then a tie for the winner the runner-up for favorite novel is The Vanished Days by Susanna Kearsley I mentioned this book in part one as well as um, it got runner-up for most cinematic I loved this book I loved this book so much I loved the time period I loved the story I loved the characters and this was one of those books that sneaks up on you I'm reading it and I'm thinking okay this is a good story and then and then bang and I thought okay now this is a fantastic story and I love it so much the winners this is a tie for my favorite novel of 2022, Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett and The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I could not choose between the two of them, so I had to have a tie here. The Pillars of the Earth was such an amazing read. Um, interestingly, <laughs> both my winners for a favorite novel were books that were like a thousand pages long. <laughs> um, but, I just loved it. The Pillars of the Earth was such an incredible story. The, I felt deeply about all the characters. I felt deeply for the characters that I loved and I felt deep, deep um, negative emotions for the characters that I did not like either. Um, it was such a good story and I loved that it, it was told over such a long period of time. Amazing, amazing book. And then The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. What a book. I mean, okay, so for a book that's over a thousand pages long, it read like a thriller. I was never bored. There was, there was a couple sections in the middle where I wasn't bored. I did question why it was there. And then I discovered why it was there and continued on. So there was no part of that book that didn't need to be there. Uh, the characters were incredible. The Count of Monte Cristo is a revenge story and it draws you in and you feel deeply for the characters. And like I said, the main character, Edmond Dantes, goes through this character arc that is just unbelievable. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely tied for winner of favorite novel. Favorite author, and I chose to go with favorite author that I discovered this year. So. I read them for the first time this year. The runner-up is Kate Moss. I read The Winter Ghosts early in 2022, like maybe January of 2022. I read The Winter Ghosts and loved it. 
and I need to read more Kate Moss because I loved her writing. Her, her writing was just so beautiful and that story about grief and um, courage, I just, The Winter Ghost was amazing and so I definitely need to read more Kate Moss. There's a tie for the winner of favorite author that I discovered in 2022 and um, <laughs> it has a direct connection to the winners of favorite novels. So the winners are Ken Follett and Alexander Dumas. I read The Pillars of the Earth, uh, the, the, the first Ken Follett that I had ever read and I really enjoy him as an author. And then Alexander Dumas, the very first Alexander Dumas that I read was The Count of Monte Cristo and he has to be a favorite author. I will definitely be reading more of him as well. And now we've come to it. The book of the year. This was hard. <laughs> this was very, very hard. And I hemmed and I hawed, but I decided to go with The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I had such a good experience reading this book. There was people that I was talking um, to about it. Um, and for such a large book, I, I read it really fast. I devoured it. The story was incredible. It was historical fiction set in the medieval time period, basically about the building of a cathedral. But the characters, I was totally invested in the characters. And um, yeah, the plot, there was a, so much going on that I just, I loved it. And so it's the winner for Book of the Year. So there you have it. These are my 2022 Year End Book Awards. This was such a fun video to do. Thank you, Nicole, for creating these categories. This was so much fun. In the comment section down below, let me know if you are going to make a video um, of your own Year End Book Awards because I would love to watch it. And if you are not a booktuber, I would love to know what would be your book of the year for 2022. Um, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.